It's a clear and cool night at Free State Raceway in Laurel, Maryland. The track is dry and fast for the Breeders' Crown Race for older pacers, and that's very good news to everybody here at the track and everyone in Maryland because Hurricane Gloria came through last night and dumped uh, four to six inches of rain on Maryland. Uh, there were winds as high as 60 miles an hour in some parts, but the track has survived. No damage. The horses managed to arrive. The drivers managed to arrive. And we are all set for the Breeders' Crown Race for Older Pacers. Hi, everybody. I'm Sharon Smith, along with Stan Bergstein, who is the Executive Vice President of Harness Tracks of America. Stan had to uh, fly into Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, in fact, this morning and drive in because uh, Baltimore Airport was closed. But everybody's here. The track is in excellent shape. And tonight, Stan, we get to see one of the great Pacers, really, in the history of the sport. Well, glory is gone and just a memory, happily. But the stars are out tonight, literally and figuratively here, including, of course, the greatest older star in the sport and on the road again. But he is not alone here, and this is the handicap division, and from your thoroughbred point of view, it would be the handicap division of harness racing. In this field of seven tonight, the lowest money winner, American Freedom, has won $440,000. Four of the horses won over $750,000, won over a million, that's guts. And of course, on the road again, has won over $2 million. Well, some of the horses here, in fact, have beaten on the road again, in spite of all the money that he's won. One of them, Division Street, has done, done it very recently, so you've got to give him a shot. Well, he beat him as recently as September the 7th, and of course, he right now, other than on the road again, is the outstanding star of the older division. However, the problem on Division Street, if there is a problem, is that when he beat him, it was at Freehold on a half-mile track. He has tremendous early speed, which gives him an advantage in getting position, and that is a lesser advantage here tonight because it's a five-eighths mile track with only three turns to negotiate instead of four. So early speed is not quite as much a factor. Okay, another horse that's beaten him was uh, Tough Choice, and he did it earlier in the year. And frankly, Stan, I thought earlier in the year that uh, Tough Choice was almost as good as on the road again. Shows what I know. Uh, turned out not to be, but of, he's a good horse. A lot of people thought that, particularly between January 10th and May 2nd when he won 13 straight races without getting defeated. He did beat on the road again on June 7th in the Driscoll final at the Meadowlands but he has not been racing as well lately, and it would be a big surprise if he were able to show his supremacy here again tonight. Okay, another horse who has done it is one who's uh, a lot of people's favorite, uh, largely, or at least partially because of his name, but also because he's a horse that, that races up to his name, certainly did last year, and that is Guts. Well, they have met. Guts and On the Road again have met 15 times. Last year, in seven meetings, Guts came away with a 4-3 edge, finishing against ahead of On the Road again four times. But this year... Uh, in eight meetings, it's been two for Guts and six for On the Road Again. So it's a 9-6 advantage for On the Road Again. Well, they do know what it uh, is to finish in front of that uh, nice chestnut stallion. Well, of course, we're concerned about the track conditions, not so much as we were earlier, because we've seen that they are uh, pretty good tonight. Kenny Rice is trackside for us again tonight, and he's been checking out what's been going on on the racing surface. Kenny? Thanks, Sharon. Fortunately for the folks here in Laurel, Maryland, Hurricane Gloria hugged the mid-Atlantic coastline last night and today, and only remnants of the storm made it inland. About four inches of rain fell in the Laurel area, and this track can handle four inches and then some, because going back to when it was the Laurel race course in the early 1960s or mid-1960s, there was a tartan surface here. It was laid down right over top of the asphalt. Well, since that time, in about the last 10 years or so, 18 inches of surface have been put on top of that, starting with a clay base, and then on top of the clay, they have a stone dust surface, which is very fast here. But what that tartan surface has done now, while it was bad for the horses to raise on, has turned out to be an excellent track to drain because of that base. And so, about 3 o'clock today, the track was in great shape. As a matter of fact, they've been putting some water on the track to keep it real fast. The wind last night was not that bad. Today it picked up a little bit, and that actually helped out the track also. The track is in excellent shape. We've had some good times early. We expect some good times tonight. So fortunately, Gloria, not a factor inland for the folks at Laurel and for the race tonight. As a matter of fact, Sharon, even the ducks in the middle of the infield have benefited tonight. They have a little more water in their pond to splash around in. Yeah, Kenny, but how will the horses like it? That is the question. Well, let's take a quick look at the uh, morning line odds on the road again. Obviously, the favorite not odds on, though, shows the quality of the field. The second choice, Division Street. Third choice, uh, Butler BG with American Freedom getting some support. That is a quick look at the morning line for these seven outstanding horses in this race. So that is still ahead, the older pacers involved in the Breeders' Crown for 1985. The Breeders' Crown is brought to you by Castleton Farm, tradition of excellence, commitment to the future. And by U.S. Air, with service to over 100 cities across the U.S. and Canada.
The British Con race for older Pacers is still ahead. We'll be back in Laurel, Maryland in just a minute. Welcome back to Free State Raceway in Laurel, Maryland, where we will see the Breeders' Crown race for older pacers just ahead. On the road again is one of the big stories of the night. He is the richest pacer of all time, the richest North American standard bred ever, and one of the people who's enjoyed his success certainly is his owner. Kenny Wright spoke with Gordon Rumpel this evening. I'm in the paddock area with a man who is living every horseman's dream, Gordon Rumpel paid $10,000 for a horse name on the road again as a yearling. He is now the winningest standard bred of all time in excess of $2.4 million. And I guess because of that, Gordon, people out here along the rail can relate to on the road again, maybe as much as any horse has come down the pike in a long time. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that, you know, people relate to road because pretty anybody in the stands could afford to, to own them themselves. Yeah, I only paid $10,000 for him and he's just been a tremendous horse for us. Another thing that On the Road has done, he has been appropriately named. He's traveled everywhere in North America on any type track against any competition. And it has not been a matter of going out necessarily and getting speed. He has a 151 and 4 mark that he turned in the U.S. pacing. But you've never gone after the time trials, always the races. Well, I've always felt that, uh, that uh, a good racehorse should, should, should appear on all size tracks, should, should race everywhere, and take on anybody who, who was willing to race against them. And so consequently, we've, we've shipped road across Canada and, and across the United States, and we've raced in pretty near every major stake race that we could possibly enter. And uh, that's one of the reasons that we've done it. Uh, I uh, have always felt that uh, the amount of money that a horse earns uh, uh, is an indication of how tough he is, and I thought that's what all, this sport was all about. Now, because of the money that he has earned again this year and because of the racing success he has had, is on the road again, you feel the horse of the year? Uh, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, uh, I think that that's up to a, voider, a voter's choice. Uh, I think that uh, that road is uh, deserving of it myself personally. But uh, voters are are voters, and and uh, they see it any way they want to see it. I I think the horse speaks for himself. Since the World Cup series at the Meadowlands, a lot of people have been talking about annihilator on the road again matchup. Do you foresee that? Uh, I don't know. I I uh, it's possible. I don't know if it'll ever come about or not. Uh, it it could possibly happen maybe in December sometime over at Garden State, but I, I, I don't, uh, uh, it's not a race that I'm saying it's going to happen. It's, uh, it's a possibility, but it, it could be quite improbable, too. Would you like to see it happen? Uh, uh, it, it really don't make any difference to me. If, 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 there's a, if the purse is large enough and the race is there and uh, we're able to get there and my horse is sound, well, uh, we'll come and race like we have, have every other time. And I know after this, it's back to Western Canada, right? You'd like to take him home for one race at least each year. Yes, we're, we're uh, shipping out tomorrow night for uh, Toronto and then shipping to Western Canada for the Stuart Fraser uh, in Edmonton. Uh, it starts on the 5th of uh, October and finishes up on the 12th. And then we'll be back down to New York to race in the Challenge Cup in New York at Yonkers Raceway. Gordon Rumpel, thanks very much for your time. Good luck tonight with On the Road again as he goes after yet another victory here in the Breeders' Crown Series this time. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Kenny. We do have another race to show you tonight, a bonus for two-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers. That is just ahead. We'll take a short time out and then be back at Free State Raceway. And welcome back to Free State Raceway, where the ninth race on this Friday night card is just ahead. It's for two-year-old Colton Geldings. It's a, a Maryland Standard Bread Fund pace. And these two-year-olds are either uh, Maryland owned or bred and by that, it is a restricted race. So let's take a quick look at the entries. There are 12 horses going in this race, and one, one is a favorite. Uh, some of them have uh, fairly good records, and that will include Final Solution, who will be the favorite. Here is a look at the horses. Windy Hawk, Computron, Final Solution. This is a horse who's won three of his 11 starts. He's been placed, uh, in fact, in more than half of his races. GE's Vic also in the field. Yankee James getting some support. He's uh, been placed in three of his four starts. Cold and Hungry also in the field, uh, along with uh, the rest of the entries, Arby's Fox, Chip, Hager's Terror, uh, Mr. Twister, Wild Goose Chase, and Shoe Jack. Now, Shoe Jack has won three and been placed uh, three more times in his career, so he's uh, got a little bit of a record. Now, these horses, this is a restricted race. Uh, they're racing for 26000 It's a good purse, but not everybody can come and put their two-year-old in this race. Well, there's a big question philosophically about restricted races in racing. There are a lot of people that don't believe that when you restrict races to either horses that are conceived in a state 
or fold an estate or owned an estate that you're necessarily doing anything for quality. It does, of course, encourage breeding in the state or ownership in the state. So you can get two schools of thought depending on whether people think that it cheapens racing or whether people think that it encourages the breeding of racing. There is no question that by protecting with limited conditions, uh, you increase ownership uh, and uh, you increase earnings possibility for horses in that given area. On the other hand, there are those that argue that it does no good to the breed as a whole to uh, have a, a good source of money for horses that couldn't compete in open companies. That's true, and that argument incidentally prevails on both sides of the field. The thoroughbred people and standardbred people feel the same way in their division of thought on the subject. Of course, uh, breeding of horses, whether standard bred or thoroughbred, is something that a lot of states like to encourage. It's a good industry. It's a clean industry. It's a labor-intensive industry. Green employs, space. Uh, it, Green space. Yes, it employs a lot of people. It's nice to have around. And a man know, so. who's done very well with it here in Maryland is Charlie Keller, former King Kong Keller of the New York Yankees, a big breeding establishment, a very successful one here in Maryland. Of course, he's got horses that can uh, compete on a... Uh, a national level, however, his horses, many of which can compete in open competition. These horses here, you know, pick up behind the gate in the home stretch and swing around, they're off on the back stretch. Yeah, so they, remember, this is a, a five a mile track. Well, they are lining up. Uh, Robin Burns is the track announcer here, so let's send it to Robin right now. Thank you, Sharon and Stan Bergstein. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful but clear and cool night here at Free State Raceway. After Hurricane Glory went through here today, that jet stream was playing tricks on us, but a beautiful night here in Laurel, Maryland. Field for tonight's ninth race is at the gate and moving through the turn. 12 two-year-old pacing Colts and Geldings going postward here for $26,100. This is the Maryland Standard Bread Race Fund for two-year-old pacing Colts. They're all settled in now nicely behind starter Glenn Campbell. This field is now in motion and there they go. They're off fan pacing cold and hungry off stride moving for the lead Yankee James between horses final solution is now second GE's Vic on the outside third ship on the far outside fourth RB's Fox between horses fifth around the turn shoe Jack is six Computron seventh Windy Hawk is eighth followed by Wild Goose Chase in ninth Hager's Terror tenth Mr. Twister eleventh and at the end cold and hungry that's the twelve of them as they swing by that initial panel, driving on the outside, RB's Fox now gets the lead in 29 and 1. Pacers now moved by the stands. RB's Fox gets the lead by a length and a half. Yankee James out for the retake. Past the stands, final solution is now third. Cheese Vic is fourth. Computron on the move on the outside, fifth. Followed by Shoe Jack along the rail, sixth. Underway, Windy Hawk is seventh. Past the stands to eighth, Wild Goose Chase. Along the rail, Hager's Terror, ninth. Cold and Hungry is tenth. Mr. Twister, eleventh. And at the end, Chip, they're by the halfway point in a minute flat. They're out of the turn and down the back stretch, driving for command. Final solution by a length and a half. Raging up on the outside, second, Computron. In the pocket, third as they move down the back stretch, Yankee James. RB's Fox looks for racing room in fourth. Windy Hawk, three, one on the outside, fifth. GE's Vic is now sixth. Wild Goose Chase, seventh. Shoe Jack between horses. Followed by Hager's Terror, cold and hungry. Mr. Twister and Chip. They'll have to catch the two to five favorite final solution. He's on top three quarters at 130 and two. They'll swing around the far turn. Final solution leads by a tight length. Yankee James is right on his heels in second. Three wide sweep on the outside. That's RB's Fox in third. They're off the turn. They're in the stretch. They're on their way home. Final solution has the lead by a length and a half. Yankee James is second. GE's Vic RB's Fox. Shoe Jack on the outside. Final solution under the whip is going to get it. Number three, final solution gets it all. Number five, Yankee James was second. Maybe the seven RB's Fox up for third. Sharon, back to you and Stan. Thank you, Robin. It was an impressive performance by a, a two to five favorite. He raced like an odds on favorite should. And so did the driver, Steve Warrington, who is way, way ahead with 103 wins, now 104 wins here in the driver's race at Free State. So the crowd liking Warrington and liking Final Solution had an odds on choice of race like one, took command approaching the half mile mark after Yankee James made some threatening moves early and it was no contest. Very comfortable win mile and two minutes and four fifths and as you'll see in the replay in the stretch drive uh, the final solution cold who was by a Maryland stallion Captain Al and out of a Harold J. Mare being good brood mares in this area of the country 
had no problems whatsoever. Steve Warrington had him well in hand coming down through the lane. And there he goes. Uh, uh, an easy win for this horse with a two-year-old. You wouldn't want to push him too hard if he was on well, the top of this I didn't have to point, in this so. particular case. This time of year, two-year-olds, you can start pushing wherever you want to. But the main element here that was of interest is uh, you're looking at a big field of two-year-olds, and it was well controlled field. Eight of them start in the first tier, and three of them, nine, ten, eleven, start in the second. And as you saw, final solution had no problem getting position early and coming on to win convincingly. Well, he was the winner. Yankee James getting second. Arby's Fox in third place, and it is now official. In fact, that's how they finish. But, of course, the big race is still ahead on the road again, and is six challengers. That is coming up. We'll be back at Free State Raceway in just a minute. And welcome back to Free State Raceway, where our uh, race, uh, in addition to the main race, is complete. And, of course, the favorite was the winner. Let's take a look at the payoffs in race number nine on the card, the Maryland uh, Fund race for two-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers. Final solution, the winner paying... 280, uh, 260, and 240. That is 280, 260, and 240. Uh, 380 and 320 paid by Yankee James and Arby's Fox, paying $5 to show. So that is a look at race number nine. You know, there is a great and long tradition of horse racing in the state of Maryland. In fact, the uh, colonial settlers were uh, racing their horses here in the 1600s. More recently, big names in horse racing. These are thoroughbreds, but Man of War was here. Native Dancer lived here. Northern Dancer lives here right now. There have been troubles in Maryland racing in recent years, but here at Free State, the mood is definitely upbeat. There have been a lot of changes at this racetrack since Frank DeFrancis bought it five years ago. The name is new. It used to be Laurel Raceway, but much of the renovation work has been designed to retain tradition. The track surface is modern. It all contributes to what DeFrancis believes is the greatest sport in the world. You know, years ago, I think all you had to do was put up a sign and say, Racing Today, and fans would flock to you because it was the only game in town. Today you have a proliferation of events that the entertainment dollar can flow to, whether it be the casinos or the lotteries or the theater or the television or the baseball or football or what have you. So today it's incumbent upon racetracks in marketing the best product in the world, because I think without question racing is the finest sport action in the world, that it's incumbent upon racetrack owners and racetrack management to create their facility uh, with proper ambiance and proper fan comfort to attract the patron. Once you do that, once you get them to your racetrack, they'll never leave because we got the best sport in the world. Free State is a small track with good numbers, averaging nearly 600,000 in handle each night. DeFrancis thinks the Breeders' Crown is good news for small tracks like his. I think the, you know, I, I love slogans, but I only love slogans when they have real meaning. And the expression that it all comes down to the Breeders' Crown is a personification of the wonderful meat that we've had at Free State. We open our meat with a homecoming steaks annihilator, and we're closing it with a Breeders' Crown and on the road again. Uh, you know, you've in between that, we've had the Lady Baltimore and the Potomac and just great racing. Uh, so that truly, the Breeders' Crown is, is, is the ultimate uh, I think it's the excellent answer to the Breeders' Cup for the thoroughbreds. I think it goes one step forward, and that is to go ahead and by having each race at a number of tracks, you're able to bring the best to various sections of the country. And frankly, I think that's far better than just sectionalizing it at one track on one day. Well, Stan, uh, a lot of people are convinced that that man is a very important figure for both thoroughbred and standardbred racing in the state. There's no question. He's been a very tremendous unifying influence here for both sports, bringing the tracks together, bringing the horsemen together, and consequently, through that unity, getting very effective legislation for racing here in the state. Uh, he's a successful businessman, he's a skilled lawyer, and he's made a very eloquent and dynamic spokesman for the racing industry. Well, that is a, a good story, but now, unfortunately, we have to tell you a much sadder one, and that is... The death in Lexington, Kentucky last night of driver Glenn Garnsey, one of the great figures in the sport, known as the, the driver of Abercrombie and Fan Hanover. Fan Hanover was one of a kind, and more recently of uh, Ar uh, Arnie's Frilly. You know, I guess he was, he was well known as a great driver of Phillies and a great person in the sport. What a tragedy. It was a tragedy. He was one of a kind. Glenn Garnsey was a man who had supreme talent as a horseman, and also had friends, and only friends. He had no enemies in the sport. He had friendly rivals, but everyone respected him as a horseman, respected him as a man, and his loss in an automobile accident last evening following a sale at Lexington was a tragic loss. Well, it was certainly a loss for all of us because all of us looked forward to seeing him every time we had the opportunity. 
Well, we will be back here at Free State Raceway in Maryland in just a couple of minutes where the Breeders' Crown Race for Older Pacers is still ahead. And welcome back to Free State Raceway in Laurel, Maryland. I'm Sharon Smith along with Stan Bergstein and Kenny Rice. Well, these older Pacers are going to be competing for a total purse of nearly $310,000 in the Breeders' Crown Race for Older Pacers. First prize, $154,000 plus dollars, all the way down to fifth prize prize, which is worth a little bit of money as well, at least some shipping money involved there. Let us take a look now at the field, this field of seven outstanding older pacers for the first ever Breeders' Crown Race for Older Pacers. The number one horse, and again, the head numbers and the post positions are the same. This is Division Street. Michelle Lachance is the driver. He is also a part owner of this horse. The rest of the owners, the M-E-K-K-L-R -E and Denim Stables. That is Division Street. Michelle Lachance, the driver. Number two horse is Butler BG. It's Ted Wing in the bike here. Lawrence Kadish, the owner of this horse, and this is a horse who's a very consistent competitor who's out virtually every week on the big tracks in the East. Butler BG, and he is given a lot of support tonight as well. Number two, Butler BG. Number three is, however, a long shot. And number three is Armbro Cadet. Doug Ackerman is the driver, an outstanding driver. And Richard Staley of California is the uh, owner of this four-year-old by Abercrombie, a very well-bred horse. He is bred by the Armstrong brothers in Canada. That's Armbro Cadet. Morning line on him was 20 to 1. Uh, number four horse is Guts. The morning line on him was 15 to 1 in spite of his uh, more than a million dollars in earnings. Bill O'Donnell, uh, one of the great drivers in the bike, and uh, Stuart Garowitz, Ralph Picaro of New Jersey, Harvey Schwartz of New York are the owners of this horse. He is a four-year-old stallion by Raven Hanover. That is Guts, who is an arch rival last year of On the Road Again. Well, the big uh, star of this field is the number five horse here on the road again, a chestnut stallion who is four years old. Buddy Gilmore is the driver. He's also a, a great enthusiast of this horse. He loves to talk about him. Uh, the Rumples are part owners, blue chip partners, and the road group also owners. Uh, in a group that owns this great, great horse. Two and a half million dollars in career earnings for On the Road again. And uh, the fans here, at least, have made him the odds-on favorite. Number six is American Freedom. Ben Webster, the driver here. Lou Guida, who owns a certain three-year-old pacer by the name of Nihilator, at least part owner, is the owner of American Freedom. Now, this horse uh, had a little trouble shipping in because the bridges were closed from where he was stabled in New Jersey. Well, he got here about three o'clock this afternoon, and American Freedom is in the field for this pace for four-year-olds and up. The seven horse is Tough Choice, a tough horse. It's a good name for him. John Campbell, the driver, he is a four-year-old stallion, a brown horse. Shady Stable Six of Baltimore, the owners of this horse, a group, and they have certainly got themselves a good one. He's uh, earned a lot of money for them, nearly 400000 this year alone for Tough Choice, the number seven horse with John Campbell in the bike. So it's a very, very good field. This is a rich bunch of horses, Stan, who are competing well, it is. Here The horse you just were looking at, incidentally, Tough Choice, is, uh, represents the epitome of limited partnerships 25 partners put money in the horse they, they bought this horse for 67,000 and he is now one uh, going into this race tonight uh, to uh, three hundred ninety one thousand dollars this year pretty good investment there's so, a, it's a good field, Stan. I really like this field. There's a, well, the, the two horses that David Robine bought, uh, two of the horses that he bought for seventy thousand roughly each for that limited partnership, have won over seven hundred thousand dollars this year. Well, let us update the odds for you right now. You can look at them yourself. You can see on the road again. The odds change a little bit. He's currently even money. He's been odds on. He'll uh, go off just about at even money. The rest of the uh, the horses about what you'd ex expect. Division Street has beaten him recently, five to two. Butler BG and uh, Tough Choice, five to one. And that is a look at what the odds look like right now. Buddy Gilmore is the driver of the big horse in the field. On the road again, he's uh, in the bike virtually every time this horse goes out, and he is a great believer in On the Road Again. Kenny Rice spoke with him a little bit earlier on. Here's Kenny and Buddy. I'm in the paddock area with one of the great drivers of all time, Buddy Gilmore, who is the driver of On the Road Again. Buddy, I was reading in Hoof Beach where you said On the Road Again, out of all the great horses that you've had, is the best one. Yeah, definitely is now. It took about a year and a half to really convince me, but he sure is. When you first drove him in 1984 out in California, did you have an idea that this was a great horse, not just a very good horse? Well, uh, right off, we wasn't so sure because we hadn't hooked into the three-year-old Colts from the east. But uh, when we got to Chicago and after we got done racing there, even though I got beat, finished second one race out there, we knew then that he was one of the top and we wasn't sure, you know, because it takes a lot more when you're racing them all the time, you know, just to 
keep them racing and everything to find out really sometimes how good they are. You have also said that on the road again has never had a bad race himself. Definitely not. He's been beaten a few times, but he's never won a bad race. You know, he, racing luck, uh, we've been beaten a few times, but uh, it's, it was never his fault, really, just the way the races went. Went home last year in the Breeders' Crown Series in Edmonton, lost sad. Is this a little more special now tonight? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> kind of after that one there, well, but uh, what was nice, even after that one, he got beaten and finished fifth. But uh, he went come back east and right after that, and I said he was as good as he ever was all year, and he broke two track records the next two weeks, so we proved it. Is this the horse of the year? Uh, we're working for it. We sure hope so. But we'll know. It. It's still a little too early yet to decide, but uh, we're, we're in pretty good position right now. If we just have a little race and luck and everything goes, he stays good like he is. We're in pretty good shape for it, I think. Okay, buddy. Good luck tonight. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Buddy Gilmore, the man who is driving the favor tonight on the road again. One way, you know, there's an irony here, Sharon. The man who bred this horse, Sam Schulzinger, one of the most popular owners ever in New York, died at a horse sale a few years ago. I never got to see this horse, of course, race. And uh, the horse sold his $10,000 yearling in January. You normally don't buy yearlings in January, but it was a great tribute to Mr. and Mrs. Schulzinger that this horse attained the greatness he did and the great tragedy they didn't get to see him, or oh, he, that Sam Schulzinger didn't. What a, what a joy he would have been because he is one of the best. That is On the Road Again, who's now at 3 to 5 for the Breeders' Crown Race for older pacers. And that is just a couple of minutes away right now. Let's take a look now at uh, the rest of the odds as they stand. Of course, they change right up to post time for the Breeders' Crown Race for older pacers. The favorite, as everybody expected, is on the road again. As you take a look, we take a short time out. We'll be back with more from Free State Raceway in Maryland as you look at on the road again and the rest of the field. We're just a couple of minutes away from post time for the Breeders' Crown Championship race for four-year-olds and up pacers. And it's a very, very good field. On the road again uh, is the, the public choice here. And you know, Stan, I think you could go broke it's picking also, against this horse. He's also my private choice. <laughs> it's not, not a surprise. You don't pick against champions, and he is one. Well, I would have to pick him, too. You see him on the track, and look at that uh, neck and those shoulders and the deep chest on that horse. It's got to be part of the reason that he goes so fast so, so many times. Magnificent horse. Now, Kenny Rice is trackside. He's been getting a, a close look at these horses as they go out on the track, and we're going to ask Kenny now which one he would pick. Kenny? Well, Sharon, I sound like a chalk player, and I guess I will be on this one. It is hard, as Stan says, to go against a champion, and oh, certainly on the road again has proven that. Please. Of the money bet today by the folks here at Free State in the wind pool right now, over half that money is on on the road again. Butler BG certainly a speed horse. Look for him to go out early, and probably Division Street likes to race out front. On the road again has proven that he can race just about anywhere. I guess if you'd like a long shot in this thing, or at least a horse maybe to get up in the money, you might want to take a look at the number six horse, American Freedom, there maybe for a show bet along the way. But on the road again certainly looks like the horse to beat tonight, and that is the consensus here at Trackside, Sharon. Yeah. Well, Kenny, uh, he and the rest of them are racing for a lot of money. Let's take a look at the top ten horses, thoroughbred and standard bred, in terms of money won this year. It's 50-50. Uh, it is 50-50, five and five. Spend the buck course got a two million dollar bonus for winning that Jersey Crown. Prakas is the leading uh, money-winning standard bred of a million two. Then you have Creme Fresh, the runner, and then you have Chairman of the Board, Follow My Star, in Grade One, holding down the last three positions. And of course, the imbalance in, in until this year for for older Pacers means that on the road again is not on that list. But he's going to try to add uh, quite a bit of money to his list today. Well, Robin Burns is our track announcer, and Robin, we're going to send it to you right now. Thank you, Sharon and Stan. Boy, what a great field it is, too. We're glad to be here at Free State tonight, especially on ESPN. And the field for tonight's 10th race is at the gate and moving through the turn. Breeders' Crown Pacers in behind the gate. Division Street, Butler BG. Armbro Cadet guts on the road again. American Freedom and Tough Choice. A great field of 7-H Pacers going postward here at Free State. The horses and drivers are now in the hands of the starter, Glenn Campbell. It's post time. And there they go. They're off and pacing Butler BG to the front between horses. Division Street moving right there with him second. On the road again, moving up on the outside. Armbro Cadet closing quickly along the rail. They're down the back stretch, heading for the turn. Guts gets away fifth. Gap of two, American Freedom sixth and tough choice. Didn't leave tonight, he's seventh and last. Breeders' Crown Pacers swing around that top turn. Butler BG. Fleet of foot, and here they go, and he'll conduct by the quarter, 27-1 on a clear, cool night, a good opening quarter. But 
Butler, BG bouncing along, leads by two. Division Street prompts the pace in second. With the leaders in third, Armbrough Cadet. On the road again, they'll start action from mid-pack. Cuts picks up live cover. American Freedom is on the limb along the rail. Tough choice. They're on to the clubhouse turn. Butler, BG is still in command of things by a length. Right along the rail in second at Division Street. On the road again, picks up the chase. Third, 56 seconds flat. They're on the turn and down the back stretch. Bouncing along the length and a half, it's still Butler BG in the pocket, second Division Street. A tough tip now for on the road again. He ends up in the unenvious place of first over. In along the rail, arm broke, and that is fourth. Guts in the outside, fifth. Showing sixth, tough choice, seventh on the outside, American Freedom. Thereby three quarters, one, 23 and four. Teddy Wing and Butler BG are rolling on the turn. Here comes Division Street, surfacing from between horses. They're off the turn. They're in the stretch. They're on their way home in a world record clip for Geldings. That's Division Street who now draws clear by three. Division Street, Butler BG on the road again. We'll get there tonight. Our road committed a good effort, but that's Division Street jogging. 152 and three, that'll shatter the world's record. Division Street, Mike Lachance, number three, Armbro Cadet, second, two, Butler BG, I believe, was third. Sharon and Stan, back to you. Well, thank you, Robin, and I guess this is more proof that there's no horse ever in any race that's unbeatable, and as soon as you think so, they're going to lose. Well, obviously, this horse was not himself tonight, as you saw. He was rough and was not himself, but that doesn't detract one iota from the tremendous performance of Division Street, and you can watch him in the stretch. He had the advantage, of course, of getting a perfect trip behind a blazing pace setter in Butler BG. And when we pick up the action here, Ted Wing, who is driving Butler BG, is still in command. Now Mike Lachance, the leading driver in America in races one, comes out and uh, starts up on the outside with Division Street. This horse has been doing virtually all of his racing on the half mile tracks in uh, New York City at Roosevelt and Yonkers. He won at Freehold also. But here he gets rolling at the head of the stretch, and this long five-eighths mile track stretch suits him fine, but he is home free from here. Great, great vindication for his owners, uh, the MEK stable, the KLR, and the Denim stable. Last year, they took $317,000 at Doc's Fella, another of their free-for-all pacers won, bought this horse for $320,000, second guest, but here he is winning the Breeders' Crown. Well, he was a winner. Arbor Cadet was second. There's a photo for third. Looks like on the road again, might have got his nose in front for third, but we'll wait on the photo. So, Division Street, the winner. An upset, of course, because an odds-on favorite was beaten, but... Uh a lot of people not surprised by this impressive victory by Division Street. We'll be back with more from Free State Raceway in just a minute. We're back at Free State Raceway where Division Street has won the, uh, the pace for older pacers in the Breeders' Crown Series. Now, this is an outstanding and fast horse who has beaten on the road again before. It was an upset tonight, certainly, because on the road again was the odds-on favorite. Armbro Cadet, and then followed by on the road again. On the road again, had a lot of trouble. He obviously had equipment trouble uh, as they went around. He broke stride, I think, a couple of times, Stan, during the race. He got right back well, on Gilmore stride. Gilmore was looking down to see what was happening, and I don't know where he, where the problem was. It was hobble, whether it was with legs or whatever equipment but uh, the horse was not himself he would appeared to be hitting himself and Gilmore obviously was uh, concerned about what was happening here he at, was this, not himself. at this point the horse did run a couple of steps but he he is a pro and he got himself right back on stride um, but he obviously was having trouble with his legs whether it was the hobbles or the horse was was sore in some way we really can't tell at this point well he was rough pretty much uh, coming home for home too but that's not to take away or detract one bit from the victory of Division Street, who has been razor sharp and tonight lowers the world record by a one and a two fifths seconds. Well, the winner is Division Street, an impressive winner and a very, very proud driver and part owner is Michelle Lachance. So let's go down to Kenny Rice in the winner's circle with Michelle Lachance. Kenny? Thanks, Sharon. Mike, congratulations. This is the first time you've been in a Breeders' Crown race. Last year, the leading dash winner. Again, you're leading in the dash winning standings. And congratulations on the victory. Yeah, thanks very much. You said that you did not expect this kind of trip just a few moments ago, that everything set up well for you. Well, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect a two-hole trip. Uh, I thought I was going to have to settle for a, th a third, sitting third, and maybe have to come first over. But it uh, turned out uh, very good for me, two-hole trip. So. 
This has turned out to be a nice night for racing, of course. The, the track was dry and it was in very good condition tonight. Yeah, the track's in super condition. Yeah, we, we, we went even faster than what we than what I thought it was going to go. I thought that the race was going to go like between 53 and 54. So, but, uh, we, uh, we went half in 56, so it's a pretty good half. So we just, and I had a perfect trip, so <laughs> I was home free after. Congratulations again, Mike Lachance. Thanks very much. Sharon? And thank you very much, Kenny. And uh, what a year it's been for Michel Lachance. He was the winner of the second Breeders' Crown Race for 1985. Let's look at the payoffs now. And there was a little bit of money paid off. Division Street, 760, uh, paying 460 and 210, 1580 and 210 to place, and 210 to show. Back with more in a minute. Welcome back to Free State Raceway in Maryland, where the presentation is underway to the uh, owners of the winner of the Breeders' Crown Race for Older Pacers, Division Street, the winner. And it's a large group that owns this horse, including partially Mich Michelle Lachance, who is the winning driver and very happy person. The uh, ceremony is underway. Paul Weissenkopf, member of the Maryland legislature, played an important part in getting the legislation passed, which has done so much to help racing in the state. So let's go down to the winner's circle and uh, check in on the ceremonies right now. Congratulations on a well-deserved uh, trophy here. It was a wonderful race. Well, thank you very much, and I'll tell you, it's a great, great thrill just to be in the race and to win the race. You can't even describe it. Words can't describe it. Super times. Thank you very much. Dan, come in here a minute. Okay. Put that there. I know you'll have plenty of time to look at that. Dan Kramer, one of the owners of Division Street, congratulations. This five-year-old gelding purchased for 320000 last year, and I know that he's brought back a lot of returns of... Uh, Happy memories for you, including this one tonight. Well, we never thought he would be this type of horse. Uh, we wanted to bring him home and just race him in the open class type races in New York, but he's improved the last six or seven weeks. We didn't even think he'd be here, but the last few weeks he's been so good, we thought we'd just take a shot. We were lucky we drew the rail, and uh, we got the, one of the greatest drivers in the world, Mike Lachance, Vinnie Orajema, the trainer. We got lucky we won. Dan, was there any particular time when you decided that Division Street was good enough? You said maybe a month or so ago you still weren't sure about the Breeders' Crown. Well, I think two weeks ago uh, he was extremely good at Freehold. He beat on the road again, and after that day I said the horse deserves it. He's made enough money back, and we got to give him a shot. Certainly the people liked on the road again tonight. He went off uh, odds on favorite, but uh, five to two, a lot of people were looking at Division Street. Well, again, he had the rail. He had just beaten on the road again. On the road again, one of the greatest horses of all time. Uh, he missed last week. It might have hurt him. Uh, but he's a great, great horse, and uh, one hot summer, one uh, one bad race uh, necessarily doesn't make a year. And a very good race tonight for Michael Chance, as, as usual for him, and also Division Street. Well, yes, and uh, he deserves a lot of credit along with his trainer and caretaker, Vinny and Joy Orijama. Great thrill. Can't can't describe it. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Thank Dan you. Kramer. One of the owners of Division Street, the winner tonight of the Breeders' Crown, Sharon. Well, Kenny, that is certainly one happy owner, and he gets to uh, take home that trophy. Well, what does all this do to the Horse of the Year voting? Well, that's not clear yet, but there are some good contenders for Horse of the Year. Let's take a look at them right now. There are three big names right now in the race for Harness Horse of the Year. One, of course, is the four-year-old pacer on the road again. The others, the three-year-old pacer Nihilator and the three-year-old Trotter Prakas, all are record breakers and all have a potential claim on the Horse of the Year title. Nihilator, son of the incomparable Nihatros, is the fastest racing standard bred in the history of the sport. His sire's time trial record is still a goal, but in August at the Meadowlands, Nihilator paced faster than any horse has ever done in a race. It's only Nihilator against the clock. Falcon Silk, they're in pursuit. They're coming to the finish. O'Donnell going to work. Here's Nihilator. Here's the final time. 149 and 3. This is the fastest race mile in history. And just two ticks off the time trial record of Nihilator. Nihilator, another devastating performance. Last week in Ohio, Nihilator added a classic race to his list of accomplishments, the Little Brown Jug, the third leg of the pacing Triple Crown. He raced for the first time ever on a half-mile track. His win was enough to convince his trainer, at least, that he should be Horse of the Year. Well, I certainly think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, maybe I'm prejudiced, but he's done more than any horse has ever done. More miles around 251, 252, and like that. And he did win in 49 and 3. And uh, I don't know how you could think anything else. Now he's dispelled the doubts about his half-mile track performance. Krakus may be the trotting equivalent of Nihilator. First in August came the Hambletonian. And the field turns for home. It's Krakus on the rail with the lead by a length and a half. 
Ron B. Hanover is trying to stay with them, but Prakis is turning it on. Prakis pouring it on inside the final eight. Bill O'Donnell goes to the whip. Prakis leads by two and a half lengths. Ron B. Hanover takes to the inside. Blackbait is third. Big Bar is fourth. Coming to the finish. Prakis is drifting out, but he's going to win it. Prakis is going to win the 1985 Pambletonian, and he has done it in record time, 154 and three. The all-time trotting record came later at DuCoin. Prakis has a wall behind him. He leads by four. On the outside, Workaholic trying to move up second. Prakis drifting across the racetrack, trotting to what might be a world record. It should be a track record. Prakis off three quarters, 124 by five lengths. Prakis home in, 53 and two. There it is. There it is. That's the fastest ever by a trotter. The fastest ever by a trotter, ladies and gentlemen. 153, two fifths. Rackus has rung the bell. Interesting developments today, however. We see on the road again lose, and we hear that in Lexington today, Prakis lost two heats. So what does that do to the horse of the year standings well, at the moment? I think it moves Nihilator out by about three more lengths. And he, of course, is due to race again tomorrow. And he has next week at Lexington, too. And on the road again is lost tonight. Might have lost him more than just the Breeders' Crown. It might have lost him Horse of the Year. Chris Nihilator has got uh, a lot more races, one would think, of prestige ahead of him. Including the Breeders' Crown. And we will see him, of course, in action. He is a great, great horse. And tonight, had on the road again uh, reversed the standings, it might have still been tight. But I think tonight Nihilator moved out. And I think what he'll do the rest of the season now, Lou Guida has said all along, once we get the world record, which is what he is really after, Nihilator's record, he will then go on and race anybody anywhere, and I think you'll see that. Well, there is still plenty of excitement still ahead in racing. Practice, of course, does have some more good races ahead, including the Breeders' Crown, so there's lots more to come, most of it in our Breeders' Crown series. So Division Street, the winner tonight in the Breeders' Crown race for older patients. He won himself $154,000. On the Gord again, you notice, added 37000 to his substantial bankroll. We'll be back with more from Free State in a minute. Welcome back to Free Straight Raceway, where we have seen Division Street upset on the road again. Let's look at the complete order of finish. Division Street was the winner, followed by Armbro Cadet on the road again, Butler BG, Tough Choice, American Freedom, and Gut. So, uh, Stan, comments about uh, what we saw here tonight? Well, I think the triumph is the ownership. Danny Kramer, who you saw on the camera with Kenny, was the man, not just one of the owners, he was the man who put this whole package together. Last year they went to Harrisburg to the sale in the late fall and they bought Division Street, the owners did, for $320,000. And there was a lot of second guessing in the sport. People said, why would you spend that kind of money, which was more than ever been spent before for a four-year-old gelding? Well, the answer became apparent. They now have a stranglehold on New York's free-for-all racing because they have Doc's fellow who has been out of action but is returning, who paid for this horse last year, and now this horse has paid for himself again, more than paid for himself. It was a triumph, and Vinnie Ora Gemma, the trainer, who trained both those horses, and his wife, Joy, who takes care of him, deserve a lot of credit. Well, he probably paid for an additional horse that they're probably shopping for right now. Let's go down to Kenny with some final comments. Kenny? Thanks very much, Sharon. Stan, of course, that is why they have racing. On the road again, indeed a champion coming into tonight's race as a heavy favorite, but it wasn't a major upset because Division Street, a 5-2 to two choice, had been coming on strong. As Dan Kramer mentioned, about a month ago, he decided this horse was good enough to put up that extra $10,000 here tonight to get him into the Breeders' Crown, and he goes on to win it. Sharon? Well, thank you very much, Kenny. That is the second race in the 1985 Breeders' Crown, but there are more still to come, including the race next week at the Meadows. And again, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, two-year-old trotting colts in the Breeders' Crown at the Meadows in Pennsylvania. Well, that is it from Free State Raceway, Division Street, the winner of the race for older pacers. I'm Sharon Smith, along with Stan Bergstein and Kenny Rice. We thank you for being with us. The Breeders' Crown has been brought to you by Hanover Shoe Farms. Tomorrow's champions are at Hanover Shoe Farms. And by U.S. Air with service to over 100 cities across the U.S. and Canada. Goodbye to everybody from Free State in Laurel, Maryland.